Uh, yeah, the gentleman's replaced Max, whose name escapes me, has apologised. Uh, I'll put it in when I remember. And Kirsty will be coming, but she's a bit late. OK, the gentle and so will the gentleman from Friends of the Earth? No, no, he's apologised completely. OK, no. all right. Um, no sign of Tom. And then Tom Taylor. Nothing. No, nothing at all from Tom. OK, all right. Um, well, we try and share the minutes um, anyway afterwards, so. Mm -hmm. Um, great. All right. Uh, well, we'll push on and Kirsty can join as she's able. Um, any declarations of interest? No. OK. Um, and I thought so the minutes. Um, uh, I don't know, but through this browser, I can share my screen and so you can see the minutes. They're all right anyway. Sorry? They're all right. Okay. You're happy. Yeah. I propose yeah. that we accept them. OK, all right. I second. All right, thank you. All in favour? Yeah, thank you, Shem. Um, and um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, the only thing to say about the, uh, I'm also fine in the minutes, um, the only thing I was going to say about them is that there are a number of um, of the things that we discussed in the last meeting, um, which aren't on tonight's agenda. So uh, the agri-food within the Dee Valley, um, the how issue of housing and any updates on that, and then the discussion about unearth. Um, so I just wondered whether we could just pause and just have a quick update on those. Is that okay, Gareth? Yeah, well, I mean, mm -hmm. I can do the members report. But... Brilliant. Um, so, um, yeah, so we discussed that uh, we would, if I get them in order in the minutes, um, we considered the, the report I drafted on agri-food and uh, agreed that we would submit a proposal. So I met with Pip and Kirsty to see where the uh, what used to be the Good Grub Club, now Frank Offen, Dee Valley Food and Drink, uh, what they were thinking, if they would um, support that kind of um, proposal that we discussed. So looking at food and uh, food businesses and growing up and down the Dee Valley, if you remember. And they said that they'd been discussing as a group um, a similar proposal, but not focused on the Dee Valley, but focused on the um, potential for the national park. Um, so kind of looking in that direction. Um, so um, so they're keen to do that. So they wouldn't want to work um, with us on a agri-food and tourism uh, proposal. Um, and so I guess that, you know, it does leave it, a, you know, I think that's really exciting that they want to do in the national park. Um, it will, I think they're looking more, if I was, the difference, the, the difference between what they're thinking and what the initial proposal was, is I think they're thinking more of like food in a tourism perspective, whereas mm -hmm. our initial proposal was more like looking at the tourism, but as part of kind of a food for residents and, and general access to um, food systems. So, um, you know, it does kind of leave us to, with a, I guess, a decision to to maybe take forward to the next council. I guess whether that's something that they um, they would want to consider, um, or if we want to, well, or or I guess with for Gareth, if you wanted to to push forward and get that application in, it would need to be done by um, by June. The the piece of work, so. Time is obviously ticking and not the most convenient time given the election period in between. Okay. They're jumping the gun a bit with a national park, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think I can... what they wanted to do is kind of line up, like look at look at what other what national parks are doing elsewhere and mm -hmm. make sure that um, businesses are um, kind of prepared for what you know for, for supporting kind of food within the national park status so i you know that was that was their decision so i'm not i'm not involved anymore uh, zero influence <laughs> isn't it kind of 24 25 the national park is that right yeah i think it's about yeah. three, three years so but you know if, yeah. if businesses are looking at changing things that can take that time to you know yeah. to turn a moving ship as it were um so um yeah so i guess you know we did we did looking at the minutes we agreed that we would submit an application looking at the d valley 
aspect. So we could still, um, we would discuss, we agreed that we would discuss the matter with partners and make an application to CAD when cluid. So if we were minded, we can push ahead with that or, um, uh, or we say having discussed with partners, um, we are happy for the food and drink group to, to continue. Um, I've let Gareth know that I'm stepping down, so I'll also be sadly stepping down from Chittisloe, uh, which I think all of you are aware. Um, so, um, so I don't, you know, it's, I don't think it's for me to, to make that decision necessarily. Well, well let, let me just also say I'm stepping down, so I fear for Chittisloe. Yeah, I am, I am also. Mm -hmm. I fear for Chittisloe, totally. I'm going to talk about it at the end when we're talking about representation yeah yeah i do as well and i think this is that this highlights the lack of having a really strong chamber of trade or group within the town that could take things like this forward with hopefully a chittislow group in the future so you've got a large group behind you but a smaller group more concentrated on businesses within this area to really talk for them. Yeah. So they have a big voice, a little voice, a concentrated voice. They've got the best of everything if they just um, could get this group together, yeah. you know, to work with Chittislow. Absolutely. And that, that has been the case in Mould, hasn't it? So Chitty, yeah. the, the enterprise group there in Mould is part of Chittislow, like it's, yeah. you know, it's an integral part. Um, so, um, OK, so it looks like then there's not an appetite for taking things forward anyway. So um, maybe one to, to leave, but to flag to um, Gareth has asked me to do a handover mm -hmm. to the uh, the next chair. Uh, so one to, to note as a handover. Yeah. Okay. All right. You happy with that, Gareth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, my only comment would be if we haven't got the D Valley food, like who, who, who would be doing it for it? You know, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's and the reason I guess I, the reason I brought it to Chittislow in the first instance is because obviously, you know, the heart of Chittislow is local food. Yeah. Um, so you know, even if um, uh, you know, in terms of its umbrella, yeah. uh, Chittislow's umbrella status in the town, whether there are, you know, there would be support for for that from other groups as well, but. Um, I mean, yeah, at a personal level, I uh, it's something, and, and and with my work hat on, it's something that's rapidly rising up the agenda for uh, for North Wales. Looking yeah. at and you know, word from the the minister herself, um, you know, really looking at food security and local food production. So I think it's an area that that is going to to need a lot of attention over coming years. So, but maybe not with this funding round. Yeah, well, what, what, uh, I mean, so uh, it, it would mean, from what you've said, it would mean if, if we did want to move it forward, this chit is lower the council, we'd need to kind of almost form another group, wouldn't we? If the group that kind of currently exists is looking, yeah, wider than just yeah. the D Valley. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Perhaps it's thirsty, John. You know, I did something to do with the food. Come back and yeah, and look at it. Okay, well, let's, yeah. um, let's come back to it if we've yeah. got time yeah. towards the end of the meeting. Yeah. Um, the second one um, was, uh, Councillor Grinley, you raised the issue of housing, um, and we resolved to publicise the TITEG website, uh, contact Denbyshire Council to circulate further information to residents, and produce an online survey to assess demand. And so I just was wondering on progress on that. I did speak to housing who said they would let people know, but I haven't heard anything since. I've been playing with forms, which is part of Teams, which can yep. create online. Um, um, and apart from that, I'm sorry, I'm really got no, my head around it. But um, as I said, though, and it's coming up with a lot of groups, we've got this banked um, door to door drop. So if we wanted to, do a you know a, a, a mail out to every household. Yeah, we have that which we've got to spend it. Mm -hmm. It's costly. 
So, you know, if rather than perhaps do online, and if we could speak to, sorry, my mouse wasn't, can't admit people, I know. Um, if, if, I've just admitted Kirsty for some reason I was able to do it. Hello, Kirsty. If, if, if we could, um, if, if obviously I need some help on what we want to say in the form. I'm not a housing mm -hmm. expert, so um, I don't know, perhaps with Councillor Grindley, if that doesn't mind, if I could arrange it. Um, yeah, no problem. Other housing officers. Yep. Perhaps I could very ask much. That, um, that Jane Abbott that helped us out before. Yeah, yeah she's very good. Get... Are, you in, are you in touch with her, Gareth, or do you need me to link? Make that link. No, it was I, I did it wasn't her but she wasn't available when I rang, so I spoke to somebody that, oh yes, we can do that. But I'll I'll follow it up with Jane. I've got her email. And yeah. then um, even if it's if you're not offended by your teams or something mm -hmm. to get together. Um we we can see what she's if she's got an old survey we could borrow or update. Yeah. And then and then use that mail out to uh, us. Really. I think that would be really valuable and um you know I'm um, I guess I'm kind of conscious of that going back to the town council discussion as well about, um, you know, affordable housing on as, as we were discussing in this meeting in Taiteg, but also relating to the um, the holiday home situation in Tlangoffin. And I wonder whether that survey could maybe consider to try and get a, an up to date assessment of of, of both uh, in terms of at least numbers. Um, one of the you know, I saw a, I can't remember which report it was, it might have been the Shape My Town document that said um, a number of, there were 485 beds uh, in the town, but I felt that was probably quite an underestimate of the number of beds available in town, if that's only the hotels and bed and breakfast, mm. because it would be difficult to assess the Airbnb situation. And when I went on the call, um, when I was on the call at the town council meeting, I, I just went online in the middle of January, didn't I, and looked at the the numbers of two bedroom Airbnbs available in mid January, which is obviously a quieter, slightly quieter time of year. And there were 155 two bedroom Airbnb mm -hmm. available mid January, let alone the you know any that weren't were already full and booked. Yeah. Um, let alone any two, any three, four, five, eight, nine, ten bedroom uh, places. So it would be. You know, it would be, I think, quite um, useful for the town council to have a better grasp on the affordable housing need in town. Yeah. Uh, and then the numbers of um, <coughs> of bed spaces uh, with regards to to Airbnb as well, if that can be. Yeah. We can ask people. It's it's more than affordable housing as well. It's also accommodation because it's been brought to my attention by some of the people who trade in town that uh, they have great difficulty finding anybody to work for them because there isn't anywhere for those people to live yeah, yeah. within a reasonable distance for the salary they're going to yeah get. yeah yeah um, so it's got a massive impact across town i think it would be nice as well if we could have in the questionnaire asking people um what do they see the future needs? Because there's a lot of people who are in two and three bedroom houses that will want to downsize within the next five years. And there's others who are looking for sort of larger houses. It's to try and get a natural picture of what we have, but what we potentially could need mm -hmm. in the future. That's a good, good point. Um, there must be other communities uh, looking at this, even if Denbyshire aren't doing the survey elsewhere. There must be other communities that have been trying to get, so there might be more resources online for that as well. Um, yeah. I'd be, obviously, I've had quite lots of experience putting together questionnaires as well, Gareth. So if you, yeah. if it would be helpful to, to pass that by, if you could circulate it to the, mm. the team. And then if anybody wants to feed in as well, then that would be really helpful. Yeah. Um, Kirsty, yeah. welcome. I can't see you, I'm afraid. Um, maybe it's just the layout of my screen. Um, but um, welcome. And Thank you. Got... I should be visible. I'm sorry for being late. Hopefully, Gareth has vouched for me. As... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. No problem. There we go. I've got you now. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, we were just going through the minutes and just uh, uh, any outstanding actions from, from the minutes. Um, the, the last uh, one was. Um, correspondence. Uh, Gareth, you uh, raised a proposal from Unearthed 
yeah um, and and whether you were able to follow up on that and yeah i've got to arrange for them when they're coming up um i've contacted them said we're interested so they've got back and said when can they come up so it's just a matter of liaison with them so at the moment they we sort of like you know not dates haven't got together but it's on the list to continue to speak to them we'll take that forward so yeah they're, they're, they're keen to work with us it's just a matter of getting to you know, Get us there at the right time because they're trying to, to um, get it in when they're in North Wales because obviously they're South Wales based, so they don't want to travel without, well, especially nowadays, <laughs> the cost of fuel. Yeah. And it's going to make every trip that I suppose. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's just a matter of the age of the when we can get together. That sounds good. Um, and Kirsty, just before you joined, we, one of the last actions uh, that we agreed in the, the early in the last meeting was to. Um, was to reach out to the, the food and drink group to see if they would be interested in um, in the the work on uh, the D Valley that we discussed, we met and discussed. And so the feeling of the group, obviously, I updated on the your plans on the national park piece, which um, I I guess you've probably submitted now. Yeah. Um, and uh, with the points that we were making was, you know, this with the turnover and the elections coming up, a lot of the um, there might be some change in the in the team. Uh, and so we're probably not in a position to take that forward through that election period. Um, but we're, we are very conscious that, um, that from the sound of what you were saying, the focus will be more on the kind of hospitality and tourism uh, side of, of things in that national park kind of consideration, rather than maybe the kind of residents and growing side, maybe with some overlap, of course. Um, so just whether we just wanted to give you an update on on that discussion, whether there was any reflections from your perspective on on it, because we're particularly because we're aware it's kind of coming up the agenda um, uh, as at a kind of regional and national level to get more more growing and and considering food security. Well, the proposal that's been put in by Sangotton and D Valley Food and Drink and Clividian Range Food and Drink, um, there's there's three strands to it. Um, but this is just a scoping and feasibility study that will only extend until June, presuming it's successful for the funding. Um, part of that is looking at what is already existing in the area and what's potentially missing in the area. Um, but that's just the first sort of section of the work. If, if that's successful and that piece of work goes ahead, then it's envisaged that further funding will be applied for and that that may um depending on the results of, of, of the initial findings that may include some of the things that have been spoken about here and i rather imagine that they'd be happy um you know to discuss that with you just to discuss that with chitterslow if, if someone um you know if someone else wanted to to be involved so that's something to look at but the initial scoping and feasibility study is a very short turnaround of essentially it's three months um, so there's only so much, frankly, that could be that could be included in that. Um, so it, it does consider what's already happening in the valley, um, but it's not going to be, you know, a, a big long term piece of work. But the next phase might be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think that's that's really helpful update. And um, I think, you know, there has the feasibility study is always an interesting piece, isn't it? Because although it can seem very short term, um, and needs always needs to be done in a hurry because the deadlines are always um, pending. Yeah. Um, that you know what you can get from a feasibility study really then positions you well. And um, and and I guess for for the people around the table and and listening, you know the, the funding situation is changing quite rapidly with um, the the kind of funding shifting from European funding, which we've been using over the last few years, to the shared prosperity and community renewal funding. Um, and and so trying to get the hold of this these kind of feasibility study opportunities will will remain important as you know as we saw from the um, the four great highways type idea where we just did a fee, you know we, we had to do a feasibility study and then the, the leveling up funding came and you know we had the, that to be able to you know pull off a shelf as it were so it's that kind of idea so um, just for um, for us all to have in mind as we, we move forward um but there's a lot of there is a lot of um uh positioning going on and feasibility work happening around north wales so i do encourage everyone to to be kind of scoping you know 
this kind of thing and as I say the, the food and drink um the, sorry the particularly the kind of um you know trying to look at supply chains and shortening food um food supply chains uh, is is going to rapidly climb the agenda both growing and and trying to to generally get more production locally okay um we'll leave it there because i don't think we can i don't think we'll be in a position to take it forward this time but um but i guess maybe just to, uh, to, to flag up the you know the need will continue We'll see how the Good Grub Club, sorry, Food and Drink Group, um, uh, get on with the the survey, uh, the work that they're doing. Um, okay, so going on to um, with uh, agreed the minutes. So if we go on to reports, um, to receive and consider reports and make necessary decisions. So we've got a report on volunteer and funding affairs. Uh, Gareth. Yes, as you recall, um, last week we said whether we could work with GBSC and. Again, it took a while to get a meeting together, but they are more than enthusiastic, I would say, mm -hmm. to get involved. Um, so I had a meeting with their enterprise and learning officer and their business manager. And obviously, building on their experience, um, they, they felt we needed a bit more leading time. And then the suggestion was also particularly the volunteer fair to try and build it around volunteer week uh, so that it would be a focus, but unfortunately, Volunteer Week coincides with Jubilee. So we've had to move. The original time would have been on one of the, the Thursday of the celebration. So they're suggesting we have the week after so that we can use the, you know, bounce off the promotion of Volunteering Week uh, to have the fair. And then um, following that, uh, later in the month, uh, again, they're more than happy to work on the funding fair. And they were <coughs> pleased to hear that the chamber will have remote access facilities, as it were, video conferencing. So we can have a combination of those that are local funders that are quite willing to travel, would be up in the main hall with others. And then we could have, uh, perhaps if it's somebody from Cardiff, a funder from Cardiff that doesn't seem to want to travel or you know, find it difficult to travel, we'd have an online either booked slots with individuals or with groups so that we could use that uh, as a video conferencing facility to 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 facilitate that. So really it's just to agree that you know, you're happy to go on with the arrangements that are both fairs. Um, just get the council to agree to give us the chamber for nothing and upstairs for nothing, which isn't really a problem. And that we we although we don't know what they are yet, that we would support any promotion of kind of advertising costs if need be from the Chitsell Cross Centre going forward. Um, I think TBSC would probably cover a lot of it through their expertise of, of promoting them in the past. And so I, I wouldn't expect it to be a, a large sum, but just to, again, sort of gesture of goodwill and partnership. Uh, if we could put some money into it, I think that would help us. So yes, I think, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's, it, it could be it's very, it's positive. Uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, yeah, just it was just just picking up on uh, on on the in the spirit of partnerships. This partnership with DVSC. Yeah. 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 So you know they put their time and effort in. We'll give it a free building. And yeah. Yeah. If we, if we need to support some additional costs in marketing. Yeah. Uh, but you know they 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 picked up a lot of what we were saying. You know volunteering has dropped off since since the uh, pandemic and there is a need to reinvigorate the sector and get more voluntary uh, commitment in certain areas so that's pretty good and they agreed you know as Councillor Lothar could just said funding is changing and therefore the need for finding a different source of funding so they like that idea of local upstairs and then workshops or one-to-ones to be booked. Can I yeah, yeah. Uh, well uh, just it's just a, an observation there's two there's two separate Two two separate activities. One is one is the kind of volunteers and, 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 and uh, the volunteer fair, and then there's a funding fair. Yeah. Can, can I suggest that for the volunteer um, uh, fair, definitely, possibly the funding fair too, that there is some presence in the doorway to the town hall. Like yeah. in the past, we've had much greater success with uh, this kind of activity if we put up the gazebo. 
the yeah. Christmas festival one, you know, the one I mean, uh, outside of the town hall, because then there's an invitation to treat. If it's mainly upstairs in the town hall, yeah, uh, yeah. you don't get passers by, really. You just get those people who are aware that it's on. Yeah. Yeah, no, we'll make sure of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think um, in the last meeting we discussed this, didn't we? We said that we would um, ideally have the, the volunteer fair outside, potentially in the square, uh, weather permitting, yeah. uh, with a backup of the town hall, mm. um, so that it's very obvious and visual that the volunteer fair aspect is there. And, um, you know, mm. June is, well, let's say reasonably reliable. I don't know if that's the case anymore, but... Um, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I agree entirely with, with Councillor Chevenet when we last did this and it was atrocious weather, even the fact yeah. that we were outside the town hall yeah. um, did, did draw in more people than we might otherwise have done. So yeah. that's really, really important. Gareth, I, I was going to also ask a question about the the kind of mixing of the fun, kind of volunteer fair and the funding aspect of it, mm -hmm. um, whether you've, you've had any further thoughts or discussions with DVSC on that, because I guess the volunteer fair, I imagine, kind of stalls set out and the target is the community groups talking yeah. to residents yeah. and um, and kind of talking with them, and really encouraging them to join as volunteers. Yeah. Uh, and then the funding fair is more for those groups to have the chance to talk with yeah. each other about funding right. projects and yeah. uh, and with donors. And I just wondered, are we are we proposing to have them both on the same day, which has got no, pluses and minuses? No, no, no. One would be on the ninth, and I think the other one we're talking the thirtieth. Okay. Thirtieth, yeah. I see. Ninth of so June. Be two specific uh, separate events. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, if I missed that. Yeah. So uh, 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 also just picking up on the same thing, it's the marketing and advertising of the two things really needs to be separate because. In the one, you kind of invite in everybody and anybody from the community, and I'm guessing in the second one, uh, you'd be targeting the people from the database we've got who kind of lead different groups, or yeah, yeah, yeah. or in the management of different groups. Yeah. As I say, the DVSC had, you know, they've got quite a, a wealth of knowledge of doing their yeah. own, so I'm hoping they would do the bulk of that to do yeah. through their networks. Uh, and then I say, if we need to help with some additional funding, then that's the suggestion. Yeah. And if we just want right. to, you know, probably the brand things, things like the branding and, you know, perhaps getting some, some yeah. uh, uh, what you call them, banners, et cetera, as you say, to promote what's going on um, and things like that. So, I mean, I was just thinking in the top of my head, we will, um, you know, it, it won't be long after the, um, the volunteer fair, won't be long after we've had something on the square. Mm. So we could do some pre publicity over yeah. that weekend as well. So yeah, yeah. If you get some material out there. Yeah. Know. Well, we're currently we're cu currently offering um, um, free stalls for local groups on on Market Street. So yeah. Be a yeah. Second bite of the cherry, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 So we can use that as so a network to our advantage. The um and then the uh, the other thing was we. In our previous discussions, we had talked about having a kind of general funding fair for any groups uh, interested. Um, and then we talked about whether it would be valuable to get the kind of um, groups or organisations that are maybe targeting the bigger funding to get them together in a room to discuss, you know, who's who's applying to the Heritage Lottery Fund, yeah. who's applying to... Um, uh you know to the general community lottery just to you know be on the same page and make sure that um that yeah. we're not all applying in the same week for you know not conflicting but um but for the similar projects so, no, we, so we, the we sort of touched on that with that you know the smiley face uh, evaluation form to use that to ask people what their aspirations are mm. they're looking at and then we could then say well look we found out that uh, three or four of you all going to the same pot. Uh, yeah. Can we build on build on perhaps partnership or co-working to mm. bring it forward? Yeah. So, so that's we touched on that, and they said that's been made to the, in the past to join people up. So yeah. you, you do this simple evaluation, and then, and then as I say, if we you know if we want to, we, we if we use the chamber effectively, we can get them back in to go yeah. and talk to the lottery or whatever. So we don't you know 
cutting, cutting down that uh, yeah. demand for people to come up and out of their offices. You know, we can just say, look, we can speak, and set up a, a scheduled meeting so we can have that sort of like, almost like webinar approach going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've touched on that sort of smiley face evaluation type for all with a few extra questions. It is it is interesting, um, and I, I'm guessing this is this is timely because in a couple of conversations I've had uh, in the last month or so, it would it, it, it kind of would appear that um, different groups are kind of uh, embracing each other and working together for exactly the reasons we're talking about. Yeah, for you know, mm -hmm. there's a a a, 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 a very strong link being established, for example, between the fringe and the Oisteadford. Yeah. And I know that the new management of the railway are really, really eager to create partnerships around town. Yeah. Uh, and be closer in. So this is quite timely. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, and I, I would say also, yeah. uh, you know, a, a particular reason why Chitterslow in its kind of umbrella mechanism yeah. is, is so important to the town. Because yeah. um, there yeah. isn't really a, um, another kind of approach to that is there particularly you know that works with community groups uh, rather than you know potentially businesses or rather may have a chamber but the community groups don't have that kind of uh, support otherwise yeah okay um so in terms of the recommendation so um can i just have a um a proposer i think we can propose that we rec uh, that we accept the recommendations yeah in three exactly. months Thanks, yep. uh, and any second thank you councillor grindley uh, all in favor yeah okay brilliant thank you um okay so going on to the next report yeah uh, okay. looking at um the just slow newsletter yeah as we said we went out to quotations as you can see um went to princes as chair paid by power and simply they have a some fine line with the instructions and employees in Austin street uh um just a brief description of the specification um we have some people that didn't understand and came back almost immediately with quotes. Um, particularly uh, shops, design and print really said, oh, we don't we don't do tendering. This is what we can offer, but they were very expensive anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you can see, three did uh, fine line uh, came back and printing solutions and WT Adams. Uh, with fine line, they did quote for run-ons, but again, they built it into another costed for each one. So it wasn't, we weren't, we weren't really able to say it's a specific amount um, for each one. That's why it's left blank, because it would mean it would look ridiculously high run-on cost, because it was, a, in, in essence, uh, the new quote for each print run. Uh, but the other two companies have supply, and, and as you can see, the one that came in, uh, not only cheapest on the print print side, but also on the run on costs were printing solutions in Chirk. Um, and therefore on the on the basis that we've got up for the quotations that uh, uh, I see no reason why we shouldn't appoint printing solutions in Chirk to take the work forward um, almost on the doorstep really and be quite convenient. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I propose we accept the recommendation. Thanks, Councillor Shemley. Yeah. Yep. I'll second it. All in favour? Great. Thank you. Um, uh, that's that's really exciting, and um, and hopefully we'll support the kind of uh, the quarterly production of the newsletter yeah. moving forward. Um, where are we up to, Gareth, with preparing the copy and translation? I know we're trying to get it out by the end of the month, but yeah, we need. To, as I said, I have contacted people. I think we contact them again because there's not not that great more of the, the contact on the website. There's us good in the spa, us good again. And Kirsty's going to get to something again on food share, and she promised because uh, she thought the deadline had passed. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll just go with what we have as soon as possible. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, perhaps the town council should throw something in as well you know, on, 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 on what's going on recently. Yeah. Uh, um, well, we can start pr promoting these two fairs. It's a definite. Yeah, we'll certain, yeah. An article from Chips Slow on the funding fairs and the partnership. <laughs> so that's four. And then, um, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's a matter of um, 
I, as I said, the only thing I haven't got admin rights to the website. I did send them all to the website guy that you asked me to. Um, right, so he's so got he's, he's got all of that. So when, I've just copy and pasted it off the screen. That's all. That's all I've done. I mean, that's that's right. the kind of beauty of it. Really, is you don't need to be able right. to do anything. You can just download the photos and download, you know, cut, cut and paste the the text. So it doesn't need anything special doing. Um, a, few, a few extra pictures from Dennis Brown, so because yeah. they load them all up. But yeah, it's just a matter of um, if we. Gareth, as part of kind of handover, if we could arrange a meeting with the website guy, um, yeah. and if there's any kind of um, uh, information that you know, I, I know I accidentally nearly deleted the whole website at one point by um, by deleting an email that I didn't think was relevant to the whole thing. So anyway, so things like that, I might just run through him with him. So yeah, yeah, doesn't fine. repeat that problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I mean, he is. In the area quite a lot now because he's doing all our networking in the town hall. Great. And then next month he's bringing all that kit in to get us up and running as well. Thursday morning. It's like everything now. Everybody's buying the kits. And we can um, set that up anyway. So um, that would be really useful. Yeah. Um, and I'm really, I don't know if any of you have been on the website recently, but um, mm -hmm. Helwyn from Peng, Friends of Penguin or uh, from the Penguin Community Hub, sorry is um has been doing a brilliant job in mm -hmm. uh in getting all of their events up on yeah. the town calendar oh, yeah. um so mm -hmm. for those of you that are involved in community groups if you know the more groups that kind of start doing that the more it becomes a valuable resource mm -hmm. and people can then refer to it before their planning events um mm -hmm. so boys can you just leave me yeah. hey ethan how are you <laughs> <laughs> Um, and um, so, yeah, the, you know, even things like our volunteer event and things like that, if we can get that up online, um, then then all that would be, you know, it just becomes a kind of go to place then, doesn't it? Um, I have been occasionally kind of putting it on the Chittislow Facebook page and onto the, the town notice boards as well to say among community groups. And it, it does seem to be relatively easy to use if Helen is able to upload all those events and things like that. So um, brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Just on uploading, just look out for the hey, had a few problems with um, getting the uh, last webinar up for some reason. It keeps on crashing. Okay. I'll, tr I'll try again. Um, uh, yeah. It's. It was uh, a. It was a really. It was a really good conversation. We didn't have yeah, many yeah. I just think people it's watching, but the conversation was was, and the people who participated have all come back, mm -hmm. and said what a wonderful conversation it was so yeah it'd be worth putting up I mean, I might be brilliant. Yeah. quickly um, um, quick look and let you know where we are on on um follow-ons really because it's quite useful to know that isn't it? Yeah. yeah i um i have done a press release um but it's not been picked up by um uh, by debiture free press or um or uh, who else that i submitted to um i can't remember now um so i will but i can use it what i've written um i can do an article on the webinars for the newsletter um mm -hmm. uh, so at least then we anybody that hasn't seen it with the online stuff can maybe pick it up in the newsletter and uh, can easily find it's very easy to find them um just through google searches so we can direct okay. people to to pick that up could go with props, props forward your press release to Slam Blogger and see if we, that, that gets us anywhere. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, tourism is up to 48 additional views. Food and energy housing, 39. Food and farming, 30. So, you know, it, it, it's, they may not have been there on the night, but yeah. They, yeah. Are, they are being watched and continue yeah. to be watched. And they, you know, I think the first one, you know, the fourth, um, Tourism yeah. 48 was in the 30s a couple of weeks back so you know they're still being watched so did you did, did you catch what i just said gareth if if, uh, if robin was to forward it to you you could uh forward it to slam blogger yeah yeah yeah, release. yeah. i've updated it gareth since the last version you, you signed off because yeah. um the yeah. timing had changed so i'll forward the yeah next okay. one. um and um i guess just one reflection um about the kind of attendance live is i have spoken to a few residents who just said that they've really struggled to access them um and i see kirsty nodding as well and so i 
I do think for next year, if we can have in mind, I just think we need to make it really easy to access. Like it's mm. very easy on the Facebook um, mm. pages to just have a live link and the, anybody that wants to join can just join. Um, you know, I think as, as host Gareth, you'd then, if there was a problem, you could just remove that person. Um, and, you know, so making it kind of e as easy to access as possible. <laughs> Um, I think would would really promote participation. I think the hurdle of having to email and register and then you know get yeah. get the link and find the email and yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, remember the day and you know if it's just done through Eventbrite and Facebook, um, I think you know it pops it's in people's calendars then um, and and can be really easily accessed. Mm. Yeah, it's a learning curve for me and I guess. Yeah. Yeah, another just in with some other hats that I've started to wear at the minute. One of the things I've found that um, uh, uh, when when you're going out to a more general uh, audience rather than something that's sort of more official, Zoom seems to be the one that people favour. And that's yeah, um, uh, 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 if you can. Uh, as I say, that's just an observation. Um, yeah, it's just that we are not already paying for teams, and teams is yeah, 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 yeah. You know, in effect, pay for analysis. I, I, I like Starly for us to be very simple. I did miss Starly had that spotlight feature, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. That worked really well last year, but we obviously didn't have that. This if anything, I'd go back to Starly because it's dead easy. It's yeah, like like Zoom is about. I, I've 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 got. A, uh, a Zoom account and it's like I guess, 120 quid or something. It's not like yeah, thousands of pounds. Yeah. It's uh, just as I say, it's, um, you know, we have teams, we already paid for it. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, they have, I mean, we would have been using it at the very beginning if they would have more than four people on the screen. But yeah. 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 They caught it pretty quickly, didn't they? Yeah. And, and uh, but there's probably a lot more we could do with it. You know, you could do teams webinars, proper webinars. It's just getting the time to learn everything. But, yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the last agenda item uh, is uh, is really around the table for members' reports. Um, just an opportunity for us all to share kind of things that we're involved in in the um, with groups in the town or things we've heard. Um, relevant to the Chittislow, um, uh themes. Um, so I would like to go around the table, but I can see some hands waving. So I'll start with uh, Councillor Chevenet. I think you were first out of the block. Yeah, um, just it's just the the whole the, it's like dominoes going off because I'm uh, because I'm not standing again for council for another term. Yeah, that means that I can no longer be the Slangotland representative on Chittislow UK which in turn means that I can't be the UK representative on Chittislow International. Yeah. Uh, so to be fair to uh, my Chittislow colleagues in the UK and uh, and the rest of the world, I am starting to uh, uh, let them know that I'm not going to be around uh, and I'm giving them Gareth's uh, email as the, yeah, email that they need to be communicating with from now on yeah uh, so that that's that's kind of one thing however uh there is there is a deadline uh which is the 15th of april where i've been asked to basically put a montage together of um Flangothlan and Flangothlan chittislow and uh, and I mean, so just to keep it simple, really, uh, and not too complicated, my plan was basically to uh, 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 scour the Facebook pages of yeah relevant organisations and just lift stuff off them, yeah, uh, and also perhaps include in it the couple of videos that we've done over the last couple of years. Uh, uh, once I've done that, I did chat with Gareth about this and he said that was okay for me to do that. Uh, so I, I, my I, I, my plan would be to do that, to forward it to Titterslow uh, and then they'll post it on the uh, international website. Yeah, uh, as kind of a, with, with a QR code. Yeah, 
whatever that means yeah uh, yeah, yeah. QR code will just take you but to yeah. your website so whether yeah. that's the just the yeah. website yeah. or or the yeah. facebook page yeah. of that yeah. group uh, yeah. depending on how you want to do it um, that, sounds, that sounds great uh chairman and, and maybe starting off with the Chitslow website in terms of photos as well because there are some there are a number of stories there yeah, yeah. Um, and i guess just to recognize that um just to check with the groups if there's that we've got permission yeah, they've yeah. got permission to use yeah, the photos yeah. um if, if needed yeah so anyway that was that was that's that, that was kind of the plan yeah uh and can i just uh because i'm guessing this will be our last chittisla meeting the Saying, end. what a pleasure it's been to work with you guys yeah mm -hmm. uh, uh, and to develop uh, Chittislow um, over the last uh, four years or so into something that I think is a really really worthwhile organization uh, mm -hmm. and I think you know you'd agree that we're actually doing loads of stuff now that just didn't exist uh, until we picked it up and ran with it. So, yeah. Yeah, true. Thank you. Sorry. Thank yeah. You. And thank you very much. Um, you know, the, I think we can um, all say, you know, I think yeah. I definitely feel the same way about this this particular team, um, yeah. but in particular to recognise your contributions to Chitslow uh, UK and Chitslow International. Um, you know, you, you and, and Jane have, yeah. you know, Sacrificed holidays to go to um, uh, to all those those meetings and um, yeah. and you know it has uh, you know it has really I think shown Clangoughlin in a in a brilliant light your yeah. representation of, yeah. Yeah. of the town in those meetings and and what what we have been able to achieve so yeah. many thanks for all that time committed. I, I think I, I, I just hope that people whoever it is that comes after us will pick it up because um, when I look at the UK group and also when I look at, at, at international group uh, and I reflect on what people are saying and doing and things, uh, Tlangothlan, a light shines on Tlangothlan, a massive spotlight for the amount of stuff that we do. And as you keep saying, it's not us, it, it's people like Kirsty, yeah? Um, yeah. You know. Chitterslow is in Clangothlan's DNA, which yeah. is, I think, uh, your coined phrase, Robin, and it's true. So it's we 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 really haven't needed to do anything because people like Kirsty are doing it. We've just kind of brought it together. Yeah. Mm. Um, I feel like in some ways we're only just getting started, so um, it's just yeah. taking a while. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, Kirsty, you put your hand up as well. Um, so, um, any, anything from your side in terms of reflections on town doesn't have to be <laughs> kind of end, end of end of era. <laughs> uh, well, I'll do that bit first. Yeah, just to say thanks so much to all of you and um, uh, you know all the contribution over quite a long time um, that's made a big difference to the town and, like you say, uh, nationally and even internationally, not not just here to, to you know to those of us that are involved. Um, and thank you for bringing me on board. Um, so yeah, thanks to all of you. Um, in terms of my um, little bit to report back today, it was just to talk about um, the idea we talked about previously of trying to get some sort of markets going in the town. We talked about the um, possibility of something like monthly markets and we talked about how places like Riffin and Ruthlan um, and other parts of, of, of the county in North Wales have um, managed to, to, to get that sort of thing up and running quite successfully. Um, I was looking at uh, ways of funding it and p potential collaborations. Um, and I've managed to speak to um, the Clangothlan Food Festival team. Um, and I've also managed to speak to Catherine Cluid. Um, we've established that there isn't any suitable funding from Catherine that, that would, would do for this particular project. Um, but that it's very likely that the Potato Forest Wind Farm Fund would be a potential funder for, for you know infrastructure items like stalls, as an example. Um, and it's clear that Langothan Food Festival are very interested and eager um, for something like this to happen. They had considered trying to arrange something quarterly, um, and it's simply due to um, busyness um, and, and poor health um, on the part of some of their committee that, that, that they haven't really moved that forward 
they're very interested in working collaboratively with Chitterslow. Um, and if it's you know something that you'd like me to continue to look into to get some more details on, you know how that uh, how that might shape, or if anyone's interested in forming a you know a subcommittee or anything like that, you know I appreciate we might not be able to make those decisions now, but it's something we we might want to carry forward. I think that sounds really exciting, Kirsty, and it's so it's absolutely as as we said just before you arrived, um, food is so central to and markets are so central to the Chitterslow um approach um that um you know i, I don't I, I don't have any hesitation really in, in maybe suggesting that the um the best way forward might be to pull that together into a report working with gareth mm -hmm. um and to be taking that to the the next meeting of the the Chitslow committee as as you know as a, a way forward and gareth could maybe help you shape it and take this you know take it in steps to um uh to, to help scope it and bring it forward with council support <coughs> as well um, does that sound okay, Gareth? Yeah, well, as Councillor Mayer knows, we've already got a resolution to support the food festival to do something mm. on the square, but yeah. unfortunately, um, social media upset. I should say really, the apple cart, right? I've got all truth on it. Um, and, and it, you know, they, they just felt they couldn't go ahead because of some public um, animosity, but, I, I, you know, square was developed for that purpose to be a multi use. We're not saying it's uh, just, you know, that, that it's necessarily there to, to, to be a, a, a regular, like a, a market day market, but a specials market, which has got a promotional a, a, a aspect of promoting local food and produce is, I think is ideal for that location. Yeah. So I think we've, you know, we may have to uh, face a bit more of an outcry, but I think, um, I, I think Last time, towards the end, people had come around a bit just to realise that it wasn't what was being envisaged. So, yeah, hopefully, you know, it's a matter of just taking that forward. There's already a presumption in favour of using this. That's changing. Councillor so. Grinley. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is a huge thank you um, to all of you. It's been an absolute pleasure working with you. I can remember being in the first meeting when I first heard the name Chittislow and spent ages learning how to say it properly, then even more time learning how to spell it properly. And Bob Loob and I getting together mm. as one of the original two. And I will admit at first, it's such a hard concept to sell. Mm. But I, was all, I can remember being told once, think of Chittislow as the cling film round about Langochlan. We're mm. keeping everything safe. We're looking after everything. So I've always got this picture of cling film in my head when it comes to Chitislow. I actually think in the last couple of years, it's coming more and more into its own. Because whereas before it was difficult to define what does Chitislow do? What good are they? What, why are we doing such a silly thing when you can't really explain it properly? It's now starting to develop. and People can see positives coming out of it, working together, especially down with local businesses confirmed with food uh, farming, promoting themselves, promoting the area. As you said, that's going to get more and more important mm -hmm. as it goes down the line. Um, you don't know how the supply chains are going to go, so we've got to develop our own local supply chains. And they have to also develop themselves into not being niche markets, but being able to be approached and accessed by everybody, no matter what their budget is. Yeah. That everything has to start being taken into consideration. <clears throat> I hope from the bottom of my heart that Chitislow carries on being an important and an invaluable part of this town. As you said, it is in our DNA. I hope that local producers, uh, a local good, positive chamber of trade comes on board and starts seeing the benefits of working with this group and take it forward into the future. So once again, thank you all for all the hard work. Um, I've enjoyed it. I've loved it. And I just want to see it getting 
bigger and better and people being able to say it and spell it properly <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Maybe an ambition for the next 20 years, Sheena. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but, but also to recognise, I hadn't realised, I, I probably did know in my memory bank somewhere that you had been on the original team. And so, you know, the <sighs> commitment over... Uh, it was 2013, wasn't it, that it yeah. started in, in town? And, and I'm sure there was work, you know, that was when it was accredited. So the work yeah. before that, I know, was was huge. So, um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's fantastic. And, and, you know, all your efforts in that time as well. So many thanks to you as well. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, yeah. uh, Councillor Mile. Um, well, I can't really follow, I can't better that, can I? Uh, yeah, you me. can. Go no, on. No. <laughs> you just got it bang on, and uh, you know it is a shame that you know it's not the end of Chitters though because Chitters though will carry on, but yeah. it's just it's it's kind of come at the wrong time really because it's really is it's got so much more interesting these last certainly these last two years. Yeah. Um, and um, you know let's just hope it continues and it flourishes, and you know it would be fantastic if it does. And, and again, as you both as both of you just said, it's been great working with everyone, and uh, just been it has been it's been fun, but everything mm. comes to an end. So uh, that's it. Yeah. Now with Miles signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mel. Um, so um, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been incredible working with you all. I think when I when I think about Chidslow, and maybe it's because it's on one of my Facebook pages that I come uh, that comes up, but. I think back before COVID, we had the in-person networking events. But yeah. We were really trying to explore whether we wanted to, what we wanted to do with Chitterslow. And we got, you know, 25 people twice into a room from, you know, all representing different groups. Um, and, you know, really the whole of, of Clangotlan community life over two yeah. meetings. Uh, and and I, I got a, just, a, I think it's about 10 seconds of video clips of the, of the room, you can still see it on the Chisto Facebook page, and mm -hmm. the room was buzzing. Everybody was, you know, everyone's heads were together, and you know, just the energy in the room was just absolutely fantastic. And for me, you know, despite all the, the kind of things, the pros and cons of Zoom and Teams and everything, you know, for me, that's, you know, that really was just exactly what I had wanted to bring to Chittislow, what I hoped we could really cultivate, and and really what I hope can move forward, and particularly out of COVID times, but. It's that chance for community groups to come together and and share, you know, understanding, share uh, experiences, share opportunities, uh, and and find ways to move forward. So um, let's let's hope that that continues, and particularly think through things like the website and, and newsletter that that will support that. Um, Mel, Councillor Mel, um, <clears throat> I forgot to say, um, what a fantastic chair you've been. Um, and you've driven, you have driven to this low, really. And uh, yeah. without you, it would not have been anywhere as good as it's been. Thank you very much, Robin. You've been absolutely brilliant. Well, that's very kind. I could not have done any of it without all of you. So um, I think uh, the, the comments about it being a brilliant team have, have been spot on. Um, as, as this is still a round of, of updates from the town, I couldn't help but, but finish my, my thing on uh, without mentioning the borough bus <laughs> so uh, sorry to drag this over after all the lovely comments um, but just to say it's happening the borough bus is in northeast wales it is being branded as we speak the branding looks incredible it's really um i, I don't know chen if you've seen your, your your facebook earlier but i sent it to you so you could share it with the friends of penguin group um but it's it's really visual um, the, the groups I've been talking with in town about it are, are really keen to get it to come to their events and pop up at different places in, in the town um, and, and really hopefully, you know, spark some exciting conversations and, and really, you know, particularly with the opportunity to, as it will say all over the bus, um, burrow not buy, um, hopefully that will also really tap into, you know, be a timely opportunity for, for families that are struggling with costs. Uh, and be the opportunity to remove some of some of that pressure, whether that be, you know, we're thinking boxes of toys, um, you know, fancy dress costumes, those kind of things that that maybe, you know, just take that bit of pressure off of families in, in the, the valley. So um, we're still working on a launch date, but and of course, I'll let you know as that happens. But um, uh, I know you've all been I, I didn't want to to not update you because I know you were all really instrumental in, in moving it forward in the early, early phases. So um, 
thank you for all of that support and, and generally you've all been brilliant so um, thank you Would anybody else like a tissue yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've got it ready <laughs> So in, in uh, next month's meeting will be in Gail's wine bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I guess just to finish off saying thank you, Gareth. I know it's not always been easy working with us. So um, thank you for sticking with uh, with the the uh, the opportunities and and uh, you know and, and and holding us through some of that. So uh, thank you for all your contributions and and really it sounds like it's kind of in in your hands. So no pressure. Uh, <laughs> well, there will be a committee. We will, we will appoint people in May from the Good. workers available and um, yeah you know things will go forward. I, I think I think the world has finally caught up with it so that, that's the difference. Yeah. And I think yeah. you know, people have realised as, as I've always felt it, 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 it if you didn't embrace Chichester you weren't a proper town anyway really because those are the things that would mean to, that matter to a local community. And I think a lot of areas are now caught up, not necessarily to become a member, but have caught up with the concept and mm -hmm. are now delivering Chitter, Chisatlow esque shall I say, uh, initiatives. Um, the, the, the one thing I would hope is that, you know, well, I fear as well, is, is I think Sharon touched on it a bit, that we don't get marginalised you now when not in Europe. Um, yeah. And uh, although it is an international, you know, it's very much focused in. Um, on the yeah. and European grouping. So you know, I just hope it would work the other way. A bit worried about um, which one is it now? Um, one of the English ones where the council. Ailsham. Yeah, where the councillors have raised. Is it value for money? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I would still argue with a lot of the things we had funding for the various projects we've done. Whilst you can't say it was definitely Chichester, the fact we mentioned it constantly shows that uh, you know I think it has has had bearing on yeah. on attracting funding into the area so you know yeah. it's not wasted and it'll continue and hopefully it'll you know um, right. yeah I wish we could get a different spelling one T would help yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, no good job we have not translated it into well <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I think I did try at one point. I was looking for translations just to see well, if, that, uh, if it worked. But it's a funny concept, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, thank you all, and um, yeah, I will endeavour to hand over. You know, particularly the the comments we've gone through this evening, where there are things that might um, that the next team might take forward. Uh, I will do my best to hand those over with Gareth's support um, yeah. and, and Kirsty yeah. uh, and Kirsty's uh, shepherding as well. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, if anybody wants to get pass on information, you're always welcome at the first meeting to attend and you know just just pass over what your comments and what you feel. I think that'd be quite useful really as so many of you aren't standing. Um it's, it's uh great. yeah. It's gonna be interesting time, so yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed. All right. Well, okay. thank you all. I'll let you get on with your evening, but yeah. lovely to see you all and hope to see you yeah. all in person soon. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Oh, just by the way, sorry. Oh, sorry. You may have seen the chat from Susan. Yeah. Susan has been following us for some time and she's actually a lecturer in Paris University, if you remember. Oh, oh yeah. 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 We've had hope to come over and see it and actually meet yeah. so hopefully perhaps this summer she may finally turn up perhaps uh, somebody yeah. if she does I, i'm sure she can hear me um i'll arrange for you to meet up the old team and the new team yeah yeah, yeah. yeah.